Hello everybody and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to be covering over how the, the fuck is that? Whoa. Alex. <laughs> That's right everybody. Today we're going to be showcasing how to AFK the UFO with all this crazy bonus stuff. So if you want to uh, be at AFK, stick around and watch this video. Hello everybody and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to be showing how to AFK the UFO wave. So, whether you're an endurance veteran that likes to be able to AFK up to 25 and would love to get that wave 30 AFK clear, or a new player and you're just having difficulty with the UFO itself, then this is definitely going to be the video for you. Or maybe you're just one of those people that just likes to go off on UFO Wave to go and do something else. You know who you are if you're one of them. So whether you just want to go off on UFO Wave to go get a tea or just take the dog for a walk, then this is the video for you. Also, if you are someone that would love to come and play some games or uh, swing by for a little bit of endurance, eh, eh? then come find me either here on YouTube or over on Twitch where I'm planning on live streaming soon. So if you have any questions about builds or anything that you've seen in any of these videos that you'd love to get answered live or even have help with endurance building itself, then feel free to come by and check me out. All the information you need to know will be in the description below. But before we go any further, I do also want to say a massive thank you to Big Head Mike who has made it a lot easier for me to be able to get the footage that I need for these videos. So if you'd want to go check him out as well, he also plays Save the World over on Twitch and I'll link his channel in the description below. So in this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know from how to deal with the husks, to the smashers, to the flingers and even the UFO itself. So, we'll break this down into sections. Also, if you want to check the description, I will be putting in there timestamps since this will be a long video and it will make it a lot easier for you guys to refer to back afterwards. But I would recommend watching this whole thing in one go as each single piece of information is going to be vital to make this whole thing work. But without any further ado, let's get into how to build. UFO will be self destructing. In Five, wait, wait, four, hold on, wait, string, three, no. two, one, self-destructing. So now we're going to be covering over the build guide for Valley Amplifier. For anybody that doesn't know, Valley Amplifier is situated south of the home base in Twine Peaks. First of all, we're going to be talking about the Huss interactions with this base design. So the Huss are going to be spawning over on the south side of the valley and then wanting to path up this uneven terrain. However, I just want to mention first that something I have added in is these sound walls. Now these sound walls are double sided and they're kind of aimed at just making the propane just drop tanks a little earlier on so they don't have to get anywhere near the objective. Then what the husks are going to be doing is pathing all the way up to the top so and then getting slowed by these floor spikes. But once they're up here you'll notice this base design. So many of you have probably seen my magic ramp amp video. If any of you haven't I'll link it in the description so you can see it but this is a similar kind of design. Now this kind of design it works with the boss and the smashers which we'll get onto later but also allows us to guide the husks without them touching the amplifier. So what we'll be doing in this instance is guiding them to the left hand side which is where the monitor is which the monitor is this little PC thing on the back of the amp. Now the husk won't be able to target the amp and destroy it unless they actually get through round this backside near here. However, something we do need to note though is that we need the block off to be able to get them all round to this left hand side. Now this block off is in very important on this right hand side, so make sure you get this correct. If you mess it up, it will ruin a lot of things. So to get in perspective, the monitor is positioned right here. Now above it, we are going to be putting a freeze trap so this covers for anything that lands on the top for stuff like flinger trash which we'll get into later on and it'll just keep them frozen. Now underneath here we have the block off. 
So as you'll notice around this, which will be the monitor, we have just ramps that face outwards, as well as then we have sound walls which are just around the outside of this box. Now the sound walls don't do too much here apart from just extra security in case anything does get there but it, it shouldn't do. Now around this we then have another layer of sound walls. These sound walls again if for anything that does come around here which doesn't really happen but it's just for the extra security in case you do end up with the odd one which does want to beat here and then two freeze traps on the east side for any that might be standing here and then we need to be able to get on top of the objective so we have a bounce pad placed just to the left of the freeze trap which allows us to jump up and position our base on the top so if we were a constructor we could put our base on the top here so now that we've covered this block off for the right hand side we can now talk about where the husk go which again is round to this left hand side once they get here, they are going to be beating on this wall launcher, but this is where the recycling is. So as you can see right here, we have the wall launcher and two floor launchers with the sand walls. Now these are going to be good enough to be able to recycle the husks off the edge here. Now down the bottom here is where we actually have a geyser. So the geyser is going to be able to recycle these husks pretty much permanently down the bottom here. Now whilst in here the husks are kept away from the objective and therefore they won't be using up any more trap durability on our traps as well. Also what you can see on the floor is I'm using floor spikes. Now these are very very bad floor spikes and they're just there for really the slow and the healing and not to damage them. As well as I have sand walls that are really just to stop them from eating on any of those walls. And they also have healing on to help heal up the side structures. And now how we're going to actually get them down here is by covering this whole area down below. So this whole area down below where there would otherwise be things like the lava below just allows us to catch them. And then we have these walls which are here to also help catch the husks that get flung. And then they're going to path into this geyser. Now when they're here something that's pretty good is this pyramid so what you want to have it as is this kind of half floor that is kind of just halfway past this geyser so there's, here's the geyser here but then to get past it we, we can't get past it so we, we have this kind of uh, half stairway that then twists and turns up and they have to get past it and the floor spikes are here these are like poo spikes so they're really bad and the only thing they're here for is to literally you don't want them doing damage and it's just to slow them down so that they never manage to get past this area and the sand walls just for anything like propane that does make it past the, this area you don't want them blowing bits up and then for this side you can see this is the other side and then they'll just be able to just walk straight up. Now I've never had anything make it past here but this is the pathway to make them want to come back up. Then if we actually don't want to use this design and we actually want to throw them somewhere else another thing we can use is the pathway which I have over here on this geyser. So if we see on this geyser we've actually got one where the husk can get caught down below and come over to the ramp amp geyser. So again this is the magic ramp amp build and um, this is the staircase for that build. Now if we go down here we'll also see this is how the geyser is built here. It's pretty similar where it's, it's a, a stair halfway and then they have to be able to get past to get up that as well with another sound wall you can add a floor spike if you want but once they have this kind of thing so we, we come up the stairs if any do make it past then we've also got the loop round here around the back of magic ramp amp where they'll then be able to get knocked off and go down below again before they can reach the objective something else you can do if you're feeling like okay um, you don't want to have these floor pieces down here below because you're trying to have a different kind of base design you can actually do something like this and attach 
a kind of a box off the side. So you can build something like this and just attach a kind of box and then kind of put walls up on this side to be able to catch them. And then what we can do is then make a stairway that will then path them all the way down towards this geyser. And then this will form a kind of a ramp which will go down whilst also making sure they get past certain areas of the base. Now you don't have to worry much about the Huss not actually pathing up these geysers and going through the tunnel as they'd much actually rather path up the geysers as it's a quicker way back to the objective. However for this tunnel what we will be doing is just putting a wall in front of it with a wall launcher that has healing on it just to bonk the occasional Huss back that might try and whack its way through. Also for the things like these geysers I would also recommend maybe adding a wall launcher to this side of the sound wall and having probably healing on this sound wall or sticking a healing trap on the reverse side just to make sure that this occasionally won't get beaten out every now and then. However the Huss will still try and normally path around even if this isn't here and still recycle on the geyser. The same can also be said for this area where we have this wooden floor spike. You want to make sure to put some sort of healing traps against this kind of wall where they're going to get be getting tossed down to because this occasionally could take damage and over a run with multiple waves if you have extra bonus waves it can occasionally get like just randomly get beat out. Um, I had this happen in one of the runs out of all of them and it's just something that you don't really want to have happen to you so make sure that you put a healing perk on those traps. Now getting back up to the main part of the objective, if you're also feeling extra 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 lazy and you decide you don't want to use this down here and you don't want to use that geyser over there either, you can simply just toss them into the box. So you can literally just suspend them above in a box like this and just keep them suspended. Now the reason this will work is similar to the monolith build which you might also be, have seen on my channel already or known as the mushroom but this idea in principle works because the husks are suspended for high. Now as they're like suspended right now for high even though they're dangling off the side they don't have a way back to the actual objective so if we look up here there is no way back to the objective from the top and they have no way of getting down from below so they're kind of in this state of being suspended between the amp and a pathway to get back so they, they have no way their AI can calculate to get back however these walls can take occasional damage and the flaws so it is advisable to use healing on your traps when doing something like this most of the time though they will just sit there and do completely nothing also because of the smasher herding strategy that we're going to be using which I'll get onto into a bit you might not want to stand over in this location unless obviously you want them in the box Last but not least we are going to be covering over the ceiling zappers which you see underneath the tiles here on the ceiling near the triangles. Now these are literally here just for the silly husks that get stuck here and need a good old bonk on the edge. So these ceiling zappers are just a, a one shot kill to basically kill any husk which is not standing or going to where it's supposed to and just got stuck and then it will just respawn another one in which will then be able to hopefully go around and go to the right location. So now we're just going to talk about the flingers and the lobbers. For the flingers and the lobbers, when they're in purple ball mode, the majority of these anti -heads should be able to take out all of the skulls that are lobbed at the amplifier. However, if the flingers are in husk lobbing mode, then they will be hitting towards the top of this amplifier just above this structure. Now how these anti are designed is like a kind of a tiered system going up towards the center from around the outside and then finishing off with this one in the middle here. If any husk does land up here they will just jump off the side and come around the back to beat through the freeze trap here and they won't be trying to get inside through this way they will just stand here. Now our base will be positioned on top and since they aim just below this shouldn't be taking the damage. 
Then as long as we aren't getting any more kills from either the zappers killing the husks that are underneath, which should only be at the start of the wave, and as long as they aren't dying by any other means, since we're using the geysers, they're not they're not getting killed, they're just being stalled, so as long as they don't die, then no more spawns will open up for the flingers to be able to throw husks, and they should only stay throwing purple balls, which will obviously get taken out by the anti airs as they one-shot them. So now we're going to go on to the Smasher Herding. Now the Smasher Herding was a strategy developed by Vocaloid9, otherwise known as um, Kirby. And this is basically where we can herd these Smashers to our location. So as we can see, these Smashers are herding underneath us. Now this can also be used for the bosses as well. So as we'll see right here, this can be used to kind of affect the boss. Now. If you'd also remember, like my magic rampant, my build's kind of been changed a little bit to kind of utilize all of these mechanics a lot better so that I can actually AFK wave 5 as well instead of having them actually attack the objective. So in order to do this smasher herding build, what we're going to require is the triangle pieces underneath that you've seen, as well as these archways and pillar walls that are attached on the top as you see in the video. And then these are going to go the entire way around the base. However, we don't have to worry about the things like the block off as these smashers will not be targeting the stuff to the rear of the amplifier. So for our floating platform that we're going to be able to stand on to AFK the waves, we want to either connect it to somewhere where the spawns aren't going to be able to blow it out as well as be able to have enemies path up to us. So for this instance I've built it where I have these bounce pads that go up one tile to avoid the smashers or the boss or the, the assassins that are going to want to path to us being able to calculate a way to reach their objective which is us. And then this pathway that I have got also goes out wide enough and far enough so that it's away from these UFO tiles that are on the floor so that the bridge won't around the top won't actually get detonated when the UFO tries to strike the floor pieces. And also we just want to be aware of the height we actually build this platform as the boss can actually teleport up towards you and attack you if you build it too low down so just build it high enough. So now we're going to talk about how to AFK the actual UFO. So for the UFO wave what we're going to need are structures for the UFO to be able to target to, to avoid targeting the base and destroying our objective. So instead of tunnels what we've actually got is floor tiles surrounding the objective towards the spawn. Now each one of these will be sufficient enough to act for one hit of the UFO. The UFO hits roughly about every 17 seconds, so you would only need around about 18 tiles to be able to completely survive the UFO wave. Thankfully we have 21 tiles. This includes the three tiles that you can see just below where I'm standing which are these three grey walls. Now you need to have all these positioned correctly to also make sure that the UFO doesn't destroy more than one at a time. By keeping a radius of one tile around each of these positionings that we place, it means the UFO can only destroy one tile at a time, as when it shoots something it destroys a 3 by 3 area. Now the reason I just put anti-airs on these is it's really just to help with the lobbers and the flingers which could be in excess, but really you do not need them and can just go without. Just You just need the floor tiles to be made sure they're placed correctly. Now to the right hand side the block off can also get shot by the UFO over there so but it's very good for just making sure for the rest of the waves everything paths correctly. So this has been a guide to AFKing the UFO wave. Now I hope you've really enjoyed it. In, in short, in conclusion, what we've managed to do here is cancel out each single element of this wave, whether it be the husks, the smashers and the boss, the flingers and the lobbers, or just the UFO itself, making it so we're capable of just AFK in the wave as nothing no longer poses a threat. Now there are some notes right at the end here if you do want to watch them otherwise this has been the whole video. I hope you enjoyed it and have a wonderful day. So for the final thoughts for this base 
it's pretty darn good. But you just have to know and be wary of your other tunnels. So for things like lava, you just have to be wary that this random spawn, which will be right just here, will try and path all the way up. And they'll either go to one of kind of a couple of places. So you can either build something like this, where you can have sort of a recycler just on the front here and let them kind of naturally path over the top part here to help deal with any that come up this way or just make sure to not have like that bounce pad which you'd seen which was here because the propane can want to come over and the ones that are on that far right spawn to jump down here to get down to the amp something you do want to be wary of as well is making sure you block off correctly for the flingers so this is the south spawn on beach now i've just got these walls here you can build it to fit your base but you just have to block it off so that the flingers don't come round this location come up to here and then try and throw husks over on top of your amp from over here so these walls will just stop them from pathing around this way for the big w that i've got though i am thinking of shifting it over one just because if i'm trying to use this geyser it does kind of get in the way now so i'm thinking of pushing it one more forward so that I can cleanly land up the top so I'd be connecting it onto the edge of here instead and going up and then it would also be mimicked on this side and I'd kind of do it from here instead at least that's my thought if I was to make the changes anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video 